Apa tu? Ayah baru buka. Tak ada kelas ke? Assalamualaikum Eka Mana yang lain? Waalaikumsalam uh, Hold on ya eh. I last friend Hai Alia. Hai uh, Hazika. Hai Sir. Last week cuti ya? I remember already. You all. Uh, mid, mid break kan? Ya? Uh-uh, mid sand break last week. Oh, no wonder engine, engine dia lambat sikit lah. Ya? <laughs> Simon dah habis kan semua? Okay, kita um, Dah, sir. Hey, you all punya paper banyak kan? If I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Tunggu sekejap eh. Sekitar 25 kan.
Any new things that you want to share with me? Um, I can't think of any, sir. Uh, can you hear me properly? Uh, yes, uh, I can hear you properly. Alhamdulillah. So, apa, apa jadi dekat uh, you all? Any news? <laughs> Enjoy tak balik kampung? Because uh, cross apa? Cross negeri dah dibenarkan. Ha, uh, but like um, duduk kat rumah je. Tak apa-apa pun. Okay lah. Uh, tak, tak pergi jalan lah mana-mana. Mm -mm. Uh, Ali, Alia saja, but the rest di mana? Uh, did you go anywhere? So kadang-kadang uh, kita ni tak boleh terperuk sangat uh, doing something, you know, uh, wanting alone duduk kat rumah kan. So you have to go and do activity somewhere or you know something. You all sibuk duduk buat assignment ke banyak ke macam mana? Oh, uh, assignment banyak lah. Banyak. Uh, kerja deadline. Kerja deadline. Kita punya, oh ya Allah, ramai nak masuk. Sat, sat lah. Hi guys. Baru 10. Bila nak start balik uh, new apa new class after the break selalunya <laughs> attendance tu kurang sikit. Pinjen nak panas lambat ni. Eh. Can you share with me how do you do your uh, assignment in a group? Do you contact each other uh, through WhatsApp or Google Meet or what? We make a group. Uh, WhatsApp group uh, macam mana Amirul? Kita orang bincang dalam WhatsApp group. Oh WhatsApp group. That, that uh, jimat the, ni lah data kan? Uh, lepas tu buat dekat Google Doc supaya semua boleh pantau. Oh okay good. <laughs> so you pakai Google Doc dah memang dah lama lah last time lagi? Uh. The depends assignment lah. Okay. So do you do uh, presentations? Uh, I have several classes yang so record video presentation lepas tu um, um, send the video macam tu lah. How many, how many minutes uh, the video? Um, it depends on the class kalau macam um, admin dia macam um, not more than 20 minutes macam tu lah, it depends on the class tau So uh, it's a group work lah? Uh, it's a group work mm -hmm. So kita orang record um, seorang-seorang lepas mm -hmm. tu compile the video to send macam tu lah See, good, good. Tapi texting lah kan? Haa uh. Buat macam mana kan covid eh? Okay, uh, I think we have enough quorum for us to start. So, penat duduk rumah eh, Basih. You know, Hazika. Uh, okay lah, good lah. At least, at least you are out there. Right, um, A'udzubillahirrahmanirrahim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. 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 Allah masuni alim Ahmad wa ala alim Ahmad. Okay, uh, kita masuk topik lima. Uh, the topic is about sovereignty. Uh, by now, obviously, uh, every one of you knows about the importance of sovereignty, kan? Uh, this is something that you were, uh, you you gone through uh, by doing the, what they call it? Uh, um, uh, 
juri, uh, jurisprudent pula eh, tak ambil jurisprudent lagi kan uh, constitution, uh, constitutional law uh, eh, tengok sebut pagi-pagi ni lepas ni <laughs> consti 1 and consti 2 right so uh, what is sovereignty then that anyone can share with me the independence of a country to make their own decision and not being affected by other countries yeah you stand as a as a oh, as a country right yeah? independent country Kedaulatan. yeah Kedaulatan. betul thank you Kedaulatan. all right uh let's move on uh, as far as this uh, apa, uh, political law and politics that we are doing we are we are that is one of the core element yeah actually uh, in terms of how we perceive sovereignty in our current uh, uh, day uh, as compared to those uh, before and uh, when it comes to politics sovereignty is the uh, most important element for me lah to, to say that uh, it is the most important element yeah uh, any politician if they are not aware of uh, the element of sovereignty of a country then uh, they fail right uh, you can be famous you want to be a politician to be uh, you know glamour uh, to gain some perks yeah uh, obviously a politician get perks in order for them to uh, hold their position the uh, when it comes to sovereignty is the most uh, important if we don't have that kind of uh, awareness then uh, we are in trouble right? meaning the society is in trouble so we are going to head on into this uh, topic in order for us to understand further uh, you know you might be the politician you might be the person that is going to be uh, doing some dealings with politician you know you might be the one that is going to give some uh, you might be the pa uh, the legal advisor of the politicians you know so whatever the position that you are going to be in uh, sovereignty uh, understanding yeah, in terms of politics uh, or politicians uh, is uh, paramount okay so that is why we are doing this uh, topic five Okay, the purpose of this topic is to understand the importance of sovereignty and in order for us to understand the overall uh, uh, syllabus yeah, in terms of why we are studying law and politics where the society and politician understanding of this uh, concept is paramount in establishing or maintaining a just and happy society because the main thing that we want in life is actually to find happiness, right? Uh, if you have learned about Jewish food and Jeremy Bentham, which I agree with him, uh, the purpose of uh, us in this life is to find happiness. Right? If you are not have being able to find happiness, then uh, life is miserable. Okay? Uh, why is it uh, miserable? If you look into uh, this situation, uh, if you look at the, you compare the picture here in this slide and uh, pictures here in this in this slide as compared to this slide, then you will see the differences in when it comes to happiness. Yeah. So uh, this slide is trying to say that uh, whatever methods that you uh, apply in your country, uh, in our country that we apply democratic uh, mm. uh, system. Uh, the core, which, uh, the core focus of us is to about living somewhere, being happy. Right? Happiness is the most uh, important element in terms of uh, uh, why we are existing in this world. Now, uh, oh my God. You, you all dengar tak uh, drilling? Guys? I cannot pin down masuk. I... Nah, I'm sorry. They were, sorry, uh, my neighbor had a what renovation. So Malam even worse lah kejap.
Oke. Okay. Uh, can you hear me? Hai guys. Boleh dengar? Boleh. Terima kasih. Semalam lagi tu uh, Allah. Alright. Um, so what I'm trying to say here is that it's all about happiness, kan? So if you are not happy, then what's the point of staying in that particular country? And then you will see people, they ran away from the country in order to find happiness. Happiness in terms of uh, ability to be safe, ability to find work, ability to have uh, a nice environment that you don't have to worry about uh, any fear, you know, uh, unreasonable fear, lah, right? So you, you have to be reasonable in terms of, uh, I mean, worry about some kind of fear, obviously. Allah kata, uh, nobody is going to be free from the test yeah, of fear that that you might face. Every day we might be having about fear, even though how small it is. When it comes to happiness, uh, ability in in a country is all about security, right? And uh, this uh, security comes from the ability for the government, in order for the government to have uh, security of the country. We, is uh, sovereignty yeah so it is a primary condition to establish security so the country uh, not sovereign is not a country that people wants to live in obviously right uh, you want to stay in a country that <laughs> you are not uh, able to feel uh, secure guys obviously and yeah? the answer is oh, what do you want to stay in Syria right now No, sir. Oh, definitely, kan? Okay? No. Uh, a, a crazy, mungkin lah, there is 1%, uh, 1%, yeah? one, no, no, 0.1% uh, people that who wants to stay in that kind of country to be able to help, maybe, yeah, uh, those people uh, uh, rescue mission and things like that, right? Uh, if you look at this uh, slide, uh, it, it is uh, trying to state uh, the fear, Uh, failed states index that we have all, all over the country, uh, all over the world, uh, trying to position the countries that is in uh, failed uh, situation. Uh, those in red, right? Uh, for example, Colombia, you know, Iraq, and then we have Afghanistan, we have Bangladesh. Uh, Bangladesh is I think Bangladesh is not that that yeah, it should be in danger lah, because they have uh, you know problems with them uh, internal problems, and then we have North Korea not really in terms of a uh, failed state but uh, it is uh, what they call it. It's failed according uh, to, to them, the world yeah. but not to but, them. Uh, the ability for the people to you know. Uh, be in the position of uh, because it, it is a uh, orang kata apa ya uh, bahaya lah uh, in terms of uh, maybe uh, revolution you know uh, people are in fear you know uh, but uh, they are not happy because uh, sometimes people realize that they are not happy but they cannot do anything because of the fear that the government put onto them So we have uh, Yemen, obviously, uh, you know, Saudi Arabia ni jahat lah. <laughs> If we kacau Yemen, they kacau uh, Iraq. Aduh, Iran pun jahat juga. Kepala, uh, hentuk hem, hentuk uh, kepala dua-dua Iran dengan Saudi Arabia. Uh, we have Chad, uh, Chad, Chad. Uh, we have uh, Sierra Leone, we have uh, Liberia. Uganda. So those those countries are in deep uh, trouble, eh? where uh, one of the factors uh, with the index uh, that saying that there are things that is happening in their countries that make people are not happy. Obviously, if you are in that uh, in these can these countries, then uh, chances are you might be able to you want to run away. Yeah? For example, Chad, uh, Sudan. Because they don't have any work, and uh, the government is not taking care. Corruption is so high. People, uh, people needs to survive. That, uh, that is where you see people running, crossing 
the Sahara Desert yeah, for Chad and Sudan. Um, you go online and then you will see people uh, crossing the Mediterranean in order for them to go to Europe, yeah, for them to get a, a better life. Sir, I have a question. Yes. Why is Russia, bring, uh, Philippines and Vietnam is in the borderline of a few state index? Yeah. Uh, borderline because the factors that they put into uh, when it comes to happiness uh, of the society, yeah, in terms of the the ability for the government uh, to put fear towards a society in order for them to not uh, revolt, uh, that is something that is uh, considered as uh, one of the main elements. So uh, for Indonesia, uh, things are not doing very well. Yeah, uh, They are not in total peace uh, as compared to Brunei, Malaysia, Singapore and Thailand. Uh, Thailand, they have their, uh, you know, problems that they have to face. But when it comes, but Indonesia, when I went there and and uh, do the interviews with uh, the police, the uh, teachers, yeah, and 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 uh, doctors, uh, talking about uh, house life, they they just uh, life is bearable, uh, in terms of, uh, you know, they have to work. And then in order to get the work that they are doing, they have to pay money. Corruption is very rampant. Indonesia is very, very rampant. Uh, Philippines, uh, because of the inability of the government to control uh, drugs, yeah, uh, and then uh, crimes, crime rates in the Philippines, uh, it's very rare for people of Malaysia to visit the uh, Philippines yeah, because uh, in a way that they don't feel safe, uh, especially uh, Philippines, Vietnam, you know. Uh, to them, maybe uh, they, the, the life uh, that they have in that country is okay, is bearable. But uh, to the standard, if you compare uh, the situation uh, or all factors uh, with European countries, then you will see the differences, yeah? You know, the ability of the government to provide uh, the... the you know, the main thing is the ability of the government, meaning the politician in that country, whether they are functioning or not. Because once they are functioning, then uh, hopefully everything goes well. You know, um, much better lah, uh, as compared to a critical uh, situation. Boleh? Russia, <laughs> Russia is corruption. Russia nearly fall down, eh? uh, or already fall down. Right? Now Russia is... Uh, least eh? as compared they say that they are communist but they, uh, they are running in terms of uh, capitalism in order for them to to survive as compared to china you see china uh, china is very well off uh, though they are suppressing their uh, citizen but the economic uh, economic status is uh, on the rise because the nature that they uh, apply, they apply both, meaning the uh, communism, economic, and uh, and the capitalist economic. Uh, yes. Sir, I have a question regarding China. Yes. So uh, I watched a documentary a few days ago with my father, and I wonder if China, you know, China uh, is a communist country. So do do they have uh, election or whatsoever? Uh, and if they do, can the opposition be from the Democratic Party or something like that? No, they, they have only one party, uh, the uh, Communist Party, right? They don't allow for opposition. So they don't have any election? No. Uh, election, the election for the, what they call it, the council, meaning uh, those uh, who is in power lah, within the... Uh, Within the uh, party itself. Okay, so far. Actually, yeah, uh, can you hear the, the noise? That there? The drilling. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right. I'll do it. Uh, what, uh, China, Russia, and uh, Cuba, say for example, eh, uh, North Korea, they are. Uh, they are uh, Vietnam for that matter. 
they are communist country, right? They declare themselves as communist. Um, but if you look back uh, to Kama uh, and how he, uh, his idea, it is not a communist country at all. Okay. Uh, no countries in this world uh, can actually declare that they are uh, according to what Karl Marx's uh, status of uh, communism. You know, uh, they are, what do you call it? Um, they are state control. Yeah, they are state control uh, countries. State control countries is different from what Marx is trying to say. Marx wants to have a situation whereby uh, the society is controlling the country, you know, uh, just like what we have seen in uh, Finland, right? Finland or Sweden the other day that we saw that uh, that video, right? So uh, I think Finland, yeah. So uh, no country in this world actually can uh, can meet the what they call it the requirement of uh, communism. Do you realize that? What is the <laughs> ideology of communism? Communism is whereby the there is no state. Uh, uh, sorry, there is no government. Uh, the government that you appoint is not uh, a government that is, uh, you know, in power. Actually, the the people is in power, where everything is being run by the society itself. Actually, Marx says that if you are uh, able to achieve that, then you don't need any laws at all. They are can be self-regulating because everything is... Because what happened to Russia is actually uh, corruption. You know, people who are in power, they, they want to enjoy uh, the position. Then uh, obviously it allows uh, the society to go underground in order for them to get what they want, you know, corruption is very rampant. They, they, because the system is different. Yeah, they think that they, they are giving the, uh, what do you call it, the equal rights for people whereby nobody have any wealth uh, on their own. Personal wealth is not uh, allowed. It's all about the state. But uh, that is given involuntarily and then uh, different from what Marx is saying. So, in order for you to really understand what Marx uh, is trying to say, you have to find out yeah, uh, yourself uh, about why uh, Marx is saying that. Because, uh, okay, um, just to give you a glimpse, yeah. Uh, anyone from Sabah and Sarawak? Cynthia, I think you are from Sabah, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, are you familiar with Rumah Panjang? Sorry, pardon, sir? Again? Uh, uh, long house. Oh yeah, uh, we do have, but Sarawak is more common about that. Yeah, okay. From the people from Sarawak and Sabah, they are quite familiar, especially those from Sarawak, as what Cynthia is saying. Uh, that is communal, communal. Uh, that is that is communist. Yeah, communal uh, living whereby everyone is sharing everything. They stay in the house. Uh, they take care of everyone. Everyone knows what needs to be done. Yeah? Everyone is doing for the common, uh, common uh, uh, role, yeah? a common outcome of the group. So uh, that that is the status that Marx is saying. We were we were once like that. We have uh, moved to uh, a, a system where we have the system of uh, monarchy, and then uh, you know, people become slave. Uh, where we produce everything for other people, for, for the leaders of the countries. And then we move to capitalists, yeah? where we have the system of capitalism uh, in the world right now, where every type of countries that they, uh, the system of the, uh, the thing, the political system that they apply, are basically underlining uh, element is capitalism. So this capitalism is, uh, is, uh, a means for people to take advantage of another uh, of each other which is which is what we are saying nowadays right so many rich people so uh, so so many poor people but very few rich people they capitalize uh, so it's a survival of the fittest you can survive okay you tak boleh survive you die 
you know so uh, this would uh, eventually uh, be in a position of revolution eventually people if you look at all the revolution it is because people are not happy when people are not happy they will uh, stand up and fight with the government and if the government falls down uh, chances of uh, the society moving to capitalism, uh, sorry, uh, communism is very high. Uh, so it is the duty of the, the so-called people who took over from the previous government to to give back you know, the power uh, in terms of ruling to the society. And the society, if they were to be in a position of what we uh, we see in uh, Rumah Panjang, right? So they would not fight each other because fighting is something that is uh, that is uh, to be avoided. Uh, because how can you survive if you keep on uh, fighting with each other? But uh, this is just uh, uh, people would say that ah, ini cuma hayalan. Eh? Uh, well, <laughs> uh, no, no country can be in that in that position because uh, that can only happen when we die when we go to heaven and there is no no what they call it uh you know fighting and things like that. people are not selfish there but in this world definitely people who wants to be rich people who wants to be in power people who wants to dominate you know it's quite difficult but uh he did not give the solution he just uh, present the problem uh if you look at the uh, kamax any questions Boleh Intan? Boleh sir. Okay. So, it's a clear statement where happiness is not happening in the uh, society. So, uh, a clear state is the government that is un in, unable to provide basic function and responsibility as a uh, sovereign nation. Uh, for example, here, uh, military defense, yeah? uh enforcement and then uh justice education economic stability right uh so a uh, common characteristic of failed state would be civil violence corruption crime poverty illiteracy uh crumbling infrastructure you know if you go to uh, if you go online and to these uh, countries then you will see uh, this type of uh, elements that is prevailing yeah uh even if a state is functioning properly, it can be fail if it lose credibility and trust of the people. You know, people are not. You you might see uh, stability in terms of uh, the country. The uh, country is functioning like what I said about North Korea, but uh, doesn't mean that people are not able to say that they are happy. Okay? They show that they are happy <laughs> because they fear the government. If you look, uh, go into YouTube and find uh, documentaries, they dare not talk because, uh, you know, talking is about uh, losing your life. Okay. So, baru kita nak masuk topik kita ya. Uh, sovereignty uh, topics that we are going to look at is uh, four, uh, legal and political definition of sovereignty. We are going to look at characteristic of sovereignty, types of sovereignty, and some theories about sovereignty. Okay, so let's move on to the legal definition. Now, uh, the this is from Kofi Annan in nineteen ninety eight. I'm not sure his speech. The concept of sovereignty. So, state uh, the one that we are going to concentrate on is state uh, sovereignty. Yeah. So. Uh, here it uh, it forced the glo uh, globalized uh, and international cooperation in a country that is able to uh, to portray themselves yeah, as a, a, a recognized global uh, state and uh, to be able to have international uh, international cooperation with uh, each other. Uh, it is uh, understood nowadays to be instrumental to, for the service of the people and not vice versa. We, we are not living in an environment where, where uh, the citizens are the slaves of the you know, person who, who is in power. Now, for example, Brunei, even though uh, a total uh, monarchy system that is applied there, uh, 
but still the the sense of obligation to do something is uh, like before when we see it in sultan uh, you know in the malay rules like the before uh, you are a subject as compared to you are a citizen nowadays the two uh, definition is totally different and then we have this individual sovereignty whereby individuals um, uh, the uh, consciousness of in individual rights that we have uh, nowadays because uh, we know our rights yeah? we know that uh, nobody can push us around nobody can take advantage of us the government especially right uh, so uh, that is the individual sovereignty that we have uh, in, in, in this current uh, nature so uh, when we, he said that when we read the charter today, we are more than ever conscious uh, that the aim is to protect the individual of uh, uh, ind individual human beings, uh, not to protect those who abuse them. Yeah. So because uh, we do have some states yeah, where the politician or the people who are sovereign in that country, they they tend to abuse their position. And that is uh, what we, in our current society today, we cannot accept. Okay, that is the uh, legal definition of sovereignty. Uh, how about uh, in, in, yeah? This remember this slide. Uh, these are the type of whatever countries that you uh, type of countries that you apply. Uh, the main thing is about uh, the ability for you not to oppress your citizens. Okay. Kita tak kisahlah pakai sistem apa pun eh. But the main thing is the ability for you to be uh, able to be in power in order for you to take care of your citizens. Because now citizens all over the world realize they have their rights. Political definition of sovereignty. Uh, if you look at political uh, definition, here... It is about uh, the dominant power or supreme authority. Okay, for example, uh, in a monarch, supreme powers reside with the sovereign or the king uh, in order uh, for us to look at uh, democracies. Uh, sovereign power rests in the people, yeah, uh, with the people. Obviously, uh, by virtue of us going to voting uh, rights, you know, uh, that is something that uh, the current democracies that we have. You know, we have uh, bodies, we have uh, parliament, congress, and things like that. Okay, uh, so that this is just to give you a, a definition of political as compared to uh, legal definition. So legal definition is about, uh, the mission is about bringing rights yeah, or uh, justice. But when it comes to political uh, definition, it's more about the one that is in power, how to make sure that the person in power, uh, nothing about what they have to do. Yeah. Once you are uh, able to be in that position, you are sovereign, therefore uh, that is the political definition in terms of uh, uh, understanding of sovereignty. Yeah. Okay, in order for us to, uh, any, any questions so far guys? No, sir. Okay, good. Uh, we look at the characteristics of uh, sovereignty. There are several. Uh, then I put it here as eight. Permanence, uh, exclusiveness, all uh, comprehensiveness, uh, in inalienability, and then we have unity, indivisibility, uh, we have uh, absoluteness and originality. Let's look at uh, each one of them. Uh, permanence, Meaning it is a characteristic of uh, sovereignty whereby we have sovereigns that last uh, long as independent uh, state lasts. Meaning uh, if you have uh, a king, then the king keep on living uh, even though the king dies. Yeah? Uh, the concept of the king yeah, that is considered as sovereignty. It's not about the king. Say for example, king A dies and then we have king B. But uh, it is not about the king. We are talking about the status uh, of the uh, the king. That is what we call 
permanence in terms of sovereignty. Exclusiveness. Uh, here I put the example of King Charles, yeah, where uh, exclusive, exclusiveness uh, is meant uh, to be only one sovereign. If there is uh, two sovereign within that particular state, then obviously, uh, definitely one of them has to go. Yeah. So you see, uh, countries in the world, we cannot have two people controlling the the society. Yeah. Uh, we we have to have one uh, one person or uh, one sovereign. Okay. Uh, his uh, method of my way or the highway uh, ends up him uh, being uh, cut off uh, his head. Eh? Uh, this is the friction between monarch and the parliament. Uh, it's quite a good uh, example eh? in order for you to go down and uh, and do your research about what happened to him. Uh, then gangster sangat <laughs> because uh, parliaments represent the society and they have the society behind them if you don't have society behind you you are going to be in deep trouble uh, all comprehensiveness uh, here we have the ability of the sovereign power uh, to what they call it um, every uh, People, uh, everyone in the country, they cannot uh, uh, go against the political sovereign. Yeah? And uh, no association or group of individuals, however rich they are or powerful they are, can resist or disobey the sovereign authority. Yeah? So that is, uh, it is not about the state, it is about the sovereignty of the state. Uh, here I put example of China, you know, uh, uh, taking action against their uh, members, uh, uh, the citizens. It is because not not about uh, communists. It is about the state, yeah, whereby the state is uh, talking about sovereignty. So if they are unable to control the society, obviously there is no point to have uh, a state. Okay, we can see that in uh, Syria. Yeah, uh, Syria. We do have uh, a government, but the government is not able to be in control because they cannot take action against those people who come uh, against them. Yeah, so uh, there is no state. So that is uh, number three. Uh, alien alienability, yeah? meaning uh, the uh, other characteristic of uh, sovereignty, whereby uh, things that can, cannot be uh, alienable, meaning uh, you cannot you know, uh, cannot disperse uh, uh, totally. Yeah. You cannot uh, cut into pieces and things like that. Um, it's meant by the state cannot part with its sovereignty. Sovereignty is something that is in within uh, the state itself. Sovereignty is the life and soul of the state and cannot be alienated uh, without destroying the state itself. Okay, so I put an example of uh, Korean uh, demilitarized zone. Uh, this is uh, the position between, uh, you know, the no man's land between uh, North and South Korea. Okay, have you seen this uh, picture before? Yes. This, this, yes. Uh, yes uh, uh, the line that cut off. Uh, this is, uh, so this is, uh, if you unable to control the Situation, then there is a chance that the whole state is going to be divided into two. Uh, unity, uh, one example that I can give, obviously, uh, looking at Malaysia. Okay, so uh, the state, the sovereign, uh, sovereign state is uh, united just because uh, it is the, for the spirit that we have, yeah, uh, of unity that we have in our country. Uh, if you don't, then uh, you have you don't have unity. Then we will see that, uh, for example, Singapore. Yeah, we don't want Singapore to be with us. Singapore doesn't want us. We don't want Singapore. Then they went out. Okay. Uh, the same thing might happen if uh, things are not being uh, taken properly for Sabah and Sarawak. Okay. Uh, question so far. 
indivisibility meaning uh, it is uh, uh, lifeblood of the sovereignty meaning something that is within the society itself uh, it cannot be divided yeah obviously uh, it is said that uh, sovereignty is the entire thing to divide it is to destroy it uh, one example uh, that I can put here is the uh, partition uh, of India and Pakistan we have the East Pakistan, we have uh, Pakistan itself. So uh, East Pakistan, uh, they revolt, they don't want to be under the Pakistan uh, control uh, or country. So they went out uh, and then formed Bangladesh. Okay. So we have India, you know, you, you if you look at uh, Gandhi, yeah, movie Gandhi, then you will see the, the issue, the main issue is about uh, independence and partition uh absolute uh, absoluteness uh yeah when it comes to absolute the sovereign is uh, absolute and unlimited sovereign is entitled to do whatever they want uh here we have uh, an example that i put here red terror this is uh in russia uh, when they took over killing the uh, emperors and the czars and what happened was the uh, between 1917 and 1922, uh, they kill uh, more or less two million people. Yeah, uh, those people who go against the idea of communism in order for them to uh, be able to control the country. So you take uh, drastic age, uh, measures in order for you to control the society. So the same thing you see uh, whenever you have uh, people on the street, then the police will come in order for uh, for those people to disperse. Yeah, why? Because it is all about sovereignty. Uh, because it, it is the what I call it the impact that is going to have towards the society. For example, those uh, in in what they call it the uh, KL. Uh, we have the pan so go right um we have uh, what do you call it protest yeah then we have protests and things like that so the police will come into that uh, situation and try to disperse it uh, why it is because of sovereignty absoluteness uh, absoluteness and then originality uh, obviously uh, means that the sovereign will power by virtue of his own right and not by virtue of anybody's mercy. So if you look at our sovereign uh, political system that we apply, it is because of their own rights. Yeah? Because the one that we apply uh, or we adopt from the federal constitution, which is uh, political uh, politician can go into power because uh, if they won their position in the election and then if you don't uh, able to form uh, your party or the government then obviously the new government will take place just like what we are going through right now okay uh, question so far Clear, insyaAllah, eh? no, tak ada, tak ada issue sangat lah eh. Uh, if you have any problem, you, you don't want to uh, ask, just chat. I'm looking at the chat, uh, looking at those people who wants to ask question. Okay, kalau tak ada, uh, we go on into types of sovereignty eh. Uh, there's five types of sovereignty, nominal, legal, poli uh, political, popular, and de facto or de jure. Yeah? So if you look at the nominal, so we have this uh, picture of uh, Tutankhamun. Eh? Uh, in ancient times, uh, many states had monarch, yeah? and their rulers are monarch, obvious, uh, monarchies. Eh? Uh, they wield that uh, absolute power and their senates and parliaments were quite powerless. You see Rome, yeah? uh, those who are in power definitely are in a position uh, better and they are in control of everyone, irrespective of the system or institution that they have. Okay, they are regarded real sovereigns, yeah? 
Second, we have legal sovereignty. When it comes to legal sovereignty, it's about authority of the state, which is which has the legal power to issue final commands. Yeah. Here we have a example in Malaysia. Uh, we have the parliament as the legal authority. They came out with the laws of Malaysia. Okay. Then we have all the acts that we are applying in our life today. So in every independent and ordered state, there are <clears throat> some laws that must be obeyed by the people and there, are, uh, there must be a power to issue and enforce this law. Obviously, uh, the government, they have institution to enforce this law by virtue of all the government agencies. Yeah? So all the government agencies have been empowered by uh, certain rules or acts. Yeah? And then uh, we have delegated legislation and so on. Uh, political sovereignty, whereby <clears throat> Dicey here uh, talks about uh, behind every sovereign uh, which the lawyer recognize, there is another sovereign to whom the uh, legal sovereign must bow, 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 blah. Uh, such sovereign to whom the legal sovereign must bow is called political sovereign. In every audit state, uh, the legal sovereign has to pay due attention to the political sovereign. Though uh, a, a politician, they are in power, obviously that they cannot be in the position that they feel they are above the law. Yeah, Obviously, uh, they want to do that, as we, what we can see in our society today, COVID, ministers are not uh, abiding to the rules and people are making, uh, you know, stating that they are not happy. So uh, they might say to you that it's okay, I'm, the, I'm a minister, I have things to do, but deep inside themselves, they know that uh, they are doing something that is wrong. Okay, So obviously, it is just a matter of us being able to put them into perspective yeah, in terms of the legal uh, position. We can take them to court in order for them uh, to be answerable to the court because they cannot be in total uh, power. This is uh, the system that we apply today, political sovereignty. And then we have popular, so, uh, popular sovereignty whereby power of the mass, yeah, meaning the society itself, uh, is the one that is in control. The ruler, I mean the sovereign, they are in control because we allow them to be in that position. Yeah? It implies manhood, suffrage, and each individual having only one vote and control the legislature by the representative of the people. In popular sovereign, uh, sovereignty, uh, from sovereignty public is regarded as supreme. So we, in our situation of uh, our country today, it is one classic example that we are in control over the politician. Uh, you know, especially when it comes to the voting time eh? uh, every five years. Next is the last one, de facto and de jure. Uh, here uh, I put an example of uh, Napoleon yeah? uh, Bonaparte. He, uh, de facts mean uh, looking at the facts, yeah? legal sovereignty whereby uh, that is the validity that you have over uh, ruling of a country. Uh, but uh, de facto it would be the one that is uh, not having uh, legal status, but uh, obviously people obey this particular uh, sovereign. Uh, one example I put here as Napoleon, if you look at his uh, history, uh, he was in power, not uh, uh, de, jure, uh, uh, de facto, but uh, de jure. Okay. Okay, uh, questions so far, guys? I think uh, I, uh, so far, okay, da? Okay, sir. Okay, now we look at the last one the, before we end the session. Theories of sovereignty, they are important uh, to us because we need to understand further how these uh, societies, uh, the concept of sovereignty that we apply throughout the world is something that is... Uh, you know, important for us to understand. Why? Because from that theories, we are able to conduct uh, deeper investigation. Yeah.
uh, I put there uh, a document that you can read in order for you to prepare yourself for uh, exam uh, situation, eh? inshallah. And then uh, I think uh, one question will come out uh, from sovereignty. Code, okay, so you know, try to to read up this uh, Nina. Uh, first one is Jean Bodin, the theory of sovereignty, whereby he is a lawyer, economic, and natural philosopher. Normally, people when uh, before, yeah, they they are everything. <laughs> In fact, uh, some of them end up uh, being uh, medical practitioner. Yeah, um, uh, for Bodin, he contends that the impact. Uh, upon both the internet and, and uh, affairs of a state you know, whereby uh, the internal and as well as external okay uh, is something that is interrelated uh, majesty or sovereignty is the most high absolute and perpetual power over the citizen and subjects in commonwealth such, uh, which is latin for majestas meaning you are majestic yeah he is supporting the uh, role of the kings yeah or the sovereign whereby they are in uh, control over the internal and the external affairs of a country uh, his book i put uh, here his book uh, levitan uh, levitan is concept of uh, uh, what do you call it, sea monster, if you are uh, looking at the Christian uh, Bible, then you will see Levathan uh, as uh, being stated. Uh, Hope uh, associates with the royal side uh, rather than the society. Uh, he uh, and might also have been uh, the reasons to fear punishment uh, because his defense of absolute sovereignty in uh, his political philosophy he is trying to say is that uh, we as the people we have to be subjected to the monarch uh, or, or the sovereign yeah uh, why because we cannot we have this uh, so-called social contract theory yeah whereby uh, he looks at from the fact that we cannot survive on our own uh, if we were to do that uh, to survive on our own it will be a short, uh, short life, yeah, because we will go into war with one another. Yeah, you fight with one another. You you kill each other. You steal. You know you do things. Yeah, so there is no peace. So what we need to do is to be able to surrender uh, our rights to the sovereign. And once the sovereign is in power, then the sovereign is able to control and make sure everything is okay. So that is what he's trying to say. So because of the nature that we cannot survive on our own, we have to have a sovereign to uh, so-called protect us in order to protect us to survive, you know, or to go into war with other countries. Yeah? So we, we have to have a leader. Uh, next, we look at John Locke, uh, social contract theory where he says that uh, the authority of the sovereigns are no longer derived from the social contract among individuals but the contract between individuals and the sovereign that can therefore be held accountable for the violation of the contract and for the infringement of the individual rights in particular so this is a new concept that we are familiar with whereby uh, the people are in control as compared to the sovereign uh, position yeah they they, they are made aware, uh, the society is made aware of the concept that the society is, is actually in control. So with uh, John Locke, uh, 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 what do you call it, uh, thinking or ideas, uh, society becomes more aware of their position. Yeah? Uh, they actually, all these people are very, very influential in terms of the ideas that they have. So can you imagine we have 7 billion uh, in our world today <laughs> and uh, these few people, their ideas is prevailing in our society throughout the whole world. Hugo Gritius, uh, Doctrine of Political Liberalism, whereby uh, he says that one society states uh, governed not by force or warfare, 
by by actual laws and mutual agreement to enforce those laws. Yeah, we we have a system whereby we uh, implement the law and the implementation of the law is to everyone. Yeah, uh, so everyone is is subjected to the legal control that we have in this uh, in in the country itself. Okay. Uh, then the last one is uh, John Jack uh, Rousseau. Uh, here he mentioned about the social contract. Uh, political sovereignty becomes a mere reflection of popular sovereignty, right? So whoever is able to uh, be in popular uh, situation uh, of the society that the society wants, then you are going to hold that political sovereignty. If the sovereign does not respect the popular, popular will, the, it risks losing its uh, attribution. Uh, what happened to Barisan National uh, is a classic example uh, uh, where uh, people don't like them, then they uh, they are thrown away. Though people don't don't really don't like uh, Barisan National, people okay with Barisan National because people realize nobody, uh, anyone who comes into power, they are going to be corrupt. That is the, our system. No matter, no matter uh, past, uh, DAP, you know, uh, whoever is going to take over the, the country, they are going to be the one that is abusing their position. But uh, the one that people don't like uh, about Barisan National is the leader, yeah? the, uh, the person that is unable to portray that you know, in in Mahajis, uh, period of time, uh, obviously people realize that money is being taken away. You know, abuse of power, corruption, uh, nepotism, and things like that. It is happening. But when it comes to Najib, is uh, enough is enough. Okay. Uh, seen in those terms, sovereignty can be both deemed as absolute uh, when it is original. Meaning, if you go uh, along the line of absolute yeah, uh, sovereignty and limited in the correspond to derived political and institutional uh, sovereignty. Meaning, uh, you are there because people appoint you there yeah, and uh, you cannot abuse that position. And therefore, if you abuse, therefore, uh, the society have every right to bring you down. Okay. Uh, right. Uh, I think that's the end of the slides. Uh, guys, so if you have any questions so far about uh, sovereignty, I don't know whether I have been uh, able to make you clear about uh, what the topic is all about. Because if you go back, I think it is so clear that nobody have any questions. So. <laughs> oh, you are so uh, apa, eager to apa, be leaving from the class. <laughs> no, sir. sir. Yeah, have... yes. One. Yes, yes, definitely. You, 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 we, we, any questions? Any question? I, I am happy when you ask question because that reflects whether I'm able to make you understand or not. Okay. If you look back to the situation in Hong Kong, right, sir? Okay, okay, Hong Kong, right? The people of Hong Kong tak nak under the rule of China. Yes. But, but rather they want to be back under British rule. Yes. So is that is that sovereignty? under their people or they want to be back under the sovereignty of the UK rule? Okay, the system that they apply uh, obviously is about the agreement between British and China, right? To pass over the, the rights to control the land after 99 years. So now it's back uh, to China. It's uh, going to be in China's hand uh, in the next few years, right? Or it, if I'm not mistaken, it is in the progress, right? of uh, uh, transfer or is it uh, already left? I can't remember already. For wh whatever reason it is, uh, they they are not happy because they have been with that position and knowing the system that is being applied. Eh? So the type of uh, sovereignty yeah, in terms of uh, this is the normal characteristic of sovereignty. So uh, the Theories of sovereignty in uh, applied uh, in China is different as compared from uh, John Locke, say for example, right? So because they don't allow people to voice out, so 
those in Hong Kong, they are not happy because they are unable to voice out. If the government is very just, uh, I mean, the, I mean, just in in administrating the country, then it's just okay. You know, they just want to be happy, uh, trying to find uh, a peace of mind. But uh, here, the Hong Kong people feel that they they are threatened. Yeah, they are threatened in terms of the control. What China is doing is trying to control the mind of uh, the society. Uh, suppression, so they don't like suppression because they will be in living in a uh, in an environment that they are. Uh, yes, obviously, Ayla, uh, I will pass the uh, slides for you. Uh, the thing is that when it comes to um, people of Hong Kong, they they are so used to yeah uh, freedom of being able to choose whoever they want. Uh, so the one that they go into election to appoint uh, the, I can't remember the lady name. So the the, the 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 position that is in control, that person or the committee that is controlling uh, Hong Kong, are appointed by China rather than being appointed by the citizen themselves. So that is what they are not happy with. So when these people who are in control of Hong Kong administration, uh when they come up with rules uh for example the other day the the, the rules of uh, not being able to be free yeah, uh, from persecution I mean, uh, maybe in a sense that uh you have that that guy uh, the boyfriend and girlfriend went to taiwan and then he kills the girlfriend you know and uh, when he came back so China wants to expatriate. Uh, expatriate. What, what's the? They they want to put uh, the sentence yeah, uh, to try that person uh, in China. So people don't like that because people want to. Uh, they want a system, the legal system that they have in Hong Kong is much better as compared to China. China, um, you know very well that yeah, when it comes to communists. Uh, the, the system of justice is very, very uh, lacking. So it is up to them to, to say their justice is based on their definition of justice as compared to what we have uh, in the democratic countries. Uh, we have a system of uh, appeal, system of uh, contest, uh, uh, contesting the decision that is being made, things like that. So uh, that system is not uh, existing in China. So people are not happy when the the decision of the administration to say that any uh, any citizen of Hong Kong is able to be tried in China. So they don't they don't like that. Uh, no expectation, but ex extradition, extradition. That that is the word. Sorry about that. Okay. Uh, boleh. For Hong Kong, that is the situation. Uh, so I, mean, uh, I think it's better for them to tuntut kemerdekaan rather than be back in British rule, kan? Tapi kenapa yeah. dia orang still nak, dia orang still kibarkan Union Jack, still mengagung-agungkan Queen Elizabeth sebab macam dia orang nak sangat balik dalam UK. No, uh, yeah, they, they want some uh, sovereign to be able to lead them rather than de leading themselves. Uh, they want uh, support from international uh, society, uh, community, uh, in terms of them to be declared as uh, what they call it, independent. So the pressure coming from international level rather than they themselves to assert that they want to have a self uh, self uh, ruling. Uh, like what we have in Irian Jaya, yeah? we have uh, what what country is that? Irian Jaya, uh, Timor Leste. Yeah, we have that. Uh, so they they fight for their uh, their independence, and then uh, they have uh, you know so many people die uh, when it comes to trying to find uh, independence. Yeah, so the the people of Hong Kong they just want to continue living but they want somebody uh, they knew that they have to have somebody in control uh, over the country and the administrators of or the sovereign so they just want the sovereign to be those of uh, british they don't want actually british but they want 
summary of the system of what British is applying as compared to the system of China, communism. So they want capitalists rather than communists. That bottom line is uh, like that. In order for you to understand the feeling of those people in uh, Hong Kong, uh, it is about the ability to be in a cap capitalist system. But China is actually a, a twin, uh, what do you call it? A, a twin system eh? where we have capitalism and communism, but communism is prevailing as compared to uh, capitalism. Capitalism is being applied for economic rather than uh, for administration. Thank you, sir. Okay, welcome. Any other questions that you want to ask, guys? Clear? Boleh jawab soalan exam? Alia. Yeah, you do your reading, and then we we have our uh, what do you call it tutorials, inshallah. Uh, today we will be looking at the uh, nature of. Ada tak kita buat yang sepau jalan tutorials? I've got so many tutorial classes, I might have, uh, you know, missed certain things. Tutorial session before we end? No, what was, uh, what was the activities that we done the other day before? Uh, yang political integrity to young wisdom, political idealism. Oh, and I see. Okay, all right. Nanti I go back to the document and uh, uh, review. Okay, uh, so kalau tak ada, tan uh, tak ada soalan, so thank you so much for coming guys. The recording will be uploaded and then uh, I don't know whether I can upload into YouTube because kadang-kadang YouTube dia akan bagi copyright uh, infringement because the pictures that I put here, uh, obviously it is from the internet. So thank you so much for coming guys. Uh, if you have any question, just, uh, you know, PM me or put into the group. Eh? So thank you. Assalamualaikum. Have a nice day. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Have a nice day. Shamil, ada apa-apa nak tanya, Intan, Aileen? <laughs> That's what he said, thank you. <laughs> That's what he said, okay, it's okay. <laughs>